Shout for joy to the Lord, all the earth. Worship the Lord with gladness. Come before him with joyful songs and know that the Lord is God. It is he who made us and we are his. We are his people, the sheep of his pasture. Enter his gates with thanksgiving, his courts with praise, and give thanks to him and praise his name. For the Lord is good and his love endures forever. His faithfulness continues through all generations. Good morning. Good morning. This is the day the Lord has made. Let us rejoice and be glad in it. Amen. It is. I want to echo Dwight's warm welcome to those of you who are here, especially those who are visiting with us this morning. We're honored with your presence, dealing with the weather issues and the temperature is just great to see everyone here this morning. I would also add that um, Bill Sledge helped Kevin Combs yesterday to right? Kevin? Bill did too. So we want to thank Bill as well. Thank you. Yeah, I can attest when I came up yesterday, I thought there's just no way this is going to happen. But Kevin and Bill and the son and all that took place. And um, it's just great to see everyone here this morning. So this month is going to be a little different than maybe the way we normally have our worship assembly. Um, I'd like to begin by reading this verse, which kind of serves as the theme verse for what we're going to be engaged in as a church family. And the song that um, Kyle led us in is going to be our theme song. We're going to start off with every Sunday uh, this month as well. These are words that Paul wrote to the church at Ephesus, and he wrote them to us just as he wrote them to the church at Ephesus. When he says, now to him who is able to do immeasurably more than all we ask or imagine, according to his power that is at work within us, to him be glory in the church and in Christ Jesus throughout all generations forever and ever. Amen. To God be the glory. Now, let there be no doubt that that's not just the theme for the month of, uh, month of February. That should be our theme every day, individually and collectively. I can't think of anything more, more worthwhile to devote ourselves to than giving glory to God. And we do that in a lot of different ways. We're going to be focusing on some collective ways in which we give glory to God as a church family during the month of February. It's also appropriate because as this year is unfolding before us, perhaps with some renewed hope, maybe some optimism, maybe some things are changing, we're going to be able to start engaging again in those things that God has gifted us to do. And there's some really exciting things on the horizon. Everyone's participation is going to be so important. But it's all about living our lives in such a way that we're giving God the glory. To give God the glory, it means to acknowledge the greatness and splendor of his majesty through honor, worship, and praise of which he alone is worthy because he is God of all. Today we begin by focusing on giving God the glory in Scripture. Giving God the glory in Scripture. We all know that the Apostle Paul had a very special relationship with a young preacher by the name of Timothy. In fact, in writing to Timothy, he called him his true son in the faith. And First and Second Timothy are instructions, encouragement, exhortation, words that Paul shares with this young man to make sure that as a young preacher, he's going to be effective. And so he encourages him by saying, don't let people look down on you because you're young. Here's things I want to instruct people about, whether it be widows, orphans, wealthy people. In every possible scenario, Paul is writing to Timothy and giving him words of encouragement, kind of as his maybe his apprentice or his protege. Paul and Timothy had a very special bond. And in the midst of all these things, Paul writes these words to Timothy in 1 Timothy chapter 4. He says, Timothy... Until I come and see you, devote yourself to preaching and to teaching. Makes sense. Young preacher being encouraged about devoting himself to preaching and teaching. However, I left out a key thought in this passage. Even before him telling Timothy to devote himself to preaching and teaching, he says this, and it seems a little bit odd, but he says this. Devote yourself to the public reading of Scripture. It's almost as if Paul is kind of distinguishing between the public reading of Scripture and preaching. I would say in some respects, in its purest form, to learn about God and His will and His wisdom and His desires for us is to read 
directly from his scripture, his word, without any commentary, without any criticism, without any embellishment, without storytelling. Just read from my word. And you'll learn about who I am, about what, about what my will is for your life. And so this morning we have several individuals who are going to be devoting themselves to the public reading of Scripture. Please do not think of yourself as the audience. We're not here to critique how well someone articulates or how well someone reads. What I would encourage you to do as we're engaged in the public reading of Scripture, we're going to be focusing on just how awesome our God is. He is honored by the fact that we would take time out of our day just to read his word and not be ashamed at all, just to spend time reading it out loud. But I really want you to think about what all these writers are saying about this amazing, awesome God that we serve. Maybe there's one thought that might really touch your heart. And the songs that Kyle has selected also underscore just how awesome our God is. So this morning, this morning, may our minds and our hearts be touched, inspired, and renewed as we're reminded of just how awesome our God is through the public reading of Scripture. The God who made the world and everything in it is the Lord of heaven and earth and does not live in temples built by human hands. And he is not served by human hands, as if he needed anything. Rather, he himself gives everyone life and breath and everything else. From one man he made all the nations, that they should inhabit the whole world. And he marked out their appointed time in history and their boundaries of their lands. God did this so that they would seek him and perhaps reach out for him and find him though he is not far away from any one of us. For in him we live and move and have our being. As some of your own poets have said, we are his offspring. Therefore, since we are God's offspring, we should not think that the divine being is a gold or silver or stone, an image made by human design and skill. In the past, God overlooked such ignorance, but now he commands all people everywhere to repent. For he has set a day when he will judge the world with justice by the appointed. He has given proof of this to every one of us by raising him from the dead. Lord, you are my God. I will exalt you and praise your name if we're in perfect faithfulness. You have done wonderful things, things planned long ago. You have been a refuge for the poor, a refuge for the needy in their distress, a shelter from the storm and the shade from the, for the, heat, from the heat. Lord, our Lord, how majestic is your name in all the earth. <clears throat> you have set your glory in heavens. Through the praise of children and infants, you have embellished a stronghold against your enemies to silence the foe and the avenger. When I consider the heavens, the work of your fingers, the moon and the stars which you have set in place, what is mankind that you are mindful of them, human beings that you care for them? You have made them little lower than the angels and crowned them with glory and honor. You made them rulers over the works of your hands. You put everything under their feet, all flocks and herds and animals of the wild, the birds in the sky and the fish in the sea, all that swim the paths, the seas. Lord, our Lord is majestic in your name in all of earth. As a deer pants for streams of water, so my soul pants for you, my God. My soul thirsts for God and the living, for the living God. For when I can go meet with God, the, my tears have been my flood, my food day and night, while people say to me all day long, where is your God? These things I remember 
as I pour out my soul, how I used to go to the house of, of God under protection of, might, of the mighty. One with shouts of joy, praise among the festive throng. Why, my soul, are you downcast? Why so disturbed within me? Put your hope in God, for I will yet praise him, my Savior in God. My scripture is from First Chronicles 16, 8 through 12, and 23, I'm 23 through 36. Give praise to the Lord, proclaim his name, make known among the nations what he has done. Sing to him, sing praise to him, tell all his wonderful acts. Glory in his name, holy name, let the hearts of those who seek the Lord rejoice. Look to the Lord and, and his strength, seek his face always. Remember the wonders he has done, his miracles, and the judgments has, has pronounced. Sing to the Lord, all the earth, proclaim his salvation day after day. For great is the Lord and most worthy of praise. He is to be feared above all gods, for all the gods of the nations are idols, but the Lord made the heavens. Splendor and majesty are before him. Strength and joy are in his dwelling place. Ascribe to the Lord all your fam families of nations. Ascribe to the Lord glory and strength. Ascribe to the Lord the glory due to his name. Bring an offering and come before him. Worship the Lord in the splendor of his holiness. Tremble before him all the earth. The world is firmly established. It cannot be moved. Let heavens rejoice. Let the earth be glad. Let them say among the nations, the Lord reigns. Let the sea resound and all that is in it. Let the fields be jubilant and everything in them. Let the trees of the forest sing. Let them sing for joy before the Lord, for he comes to judge the earth. Give thanks to the Lord, for he is good. His love endures forever. Cry out, save us, God, our Savior. Gather us and deliver us from the nations that we may give thanks to your holy name and glory in his, your praise. Praise to be the Lord, the God of Israel, from, for, from everlasting to everlasting, that all the people say amen and praise the Lord. I'll be reading from Romans 8, 5, 1 through 8. Therefore, since we have been justified through faith, we have peace with God through our Lord Jesus Christ, through whom we have gained access by faith into this grace in which we now stand. And we boast in the hope of the glory of God. Not only so, but we also glory in our sufferings because we know that suffering produces perseverance, perseverance character, and character hope. And hope does not put us to shame because God's love has been poured out into our hearts through the Holy Spirit who has been given to us. You see, at just the right time when we were all still powerless, Christ died for the ungodly. Very rarely will anyone die for a righteous person, though for a good person, someone might possibly dare to die. But God demonstrates his own love for us in this. While we were still sinners, Christ died for us. This is Psalm 139. You have searched me, Lord, and you know me. You know when I sit and when I rise. You perceive my thoughts from afar. You discern my going out and my lying down. You are familiar with all my ways. Before a word is on my tongue, you, Lord, know it completely. You hem me in behind and before, and you lay your hand upon me. Such knowledge is too wonderful for me, too lofty for me to attain. Where can I go from your spirit? Where can I flee from your presence? If I go up to the heavens, you are there. If I make my bed 
In the depths you are there. If I settle on the far side of the sea, even there your hand will guide me. Your right hand will hold me. If I say, surely the darkness will hide me and the light become night around me, even the darkness will not be dark to you. The night will shine like the day, for darkness is as light to you. For you created my most, my inmost being. You knit me together in my mother's womb. I praise you because I am fearfully and wonderfully made. Your works are wonderful. I know that full well. My frame was not hidden from you when I was made in a secret place. When I was woven together in the depths of the earth, your eyes saw my unformed body. All the days ordained for me were written in your book before one of them came to be. How precious to me are your thoughts, God. How vast is, is the sum of them. Were I to count them, they would outnumber the grains of sand. When I awake, I am still with you. Do you not know? Have you not heard? Has it not been told you from the beginning? Have you not understood since the earth was founded? He sits enthroned above the circle of the earth, and its people are like grasshoppers. He stretches out the heavens like a canopy and spreads them out like a tent to live in. To whom will you compare me, or who is my equal, says the Holy One? Lift up your eyes and look to the heavens. Who created all these? He who brings out the starry host one by one and calls forth each of them by name. Because of his great power and mighty strength, not one of them is missing. Do you not know? Have you not heard? The Lord is the everlasting God, the creator of of the ends of the earth. He will not grow tired or weary, and his understanding no one can fathom. He gives strength to the weary and increases the power of the weak. Even youths grow tired and weary, and young men stumble and fall. But those who hope in the Lord will renew their strength. They will soar on wings like eagles. They will run and not grow weary. They will walk and not be faint. Your word is a lamp for my feet, a light on my path. I have taken an oath and confirmed it that I will follow your righteous laws. I have suffered much. Preserve my life, Lord, according to your word. Though I constantly take my life in my hands, I will not forget your law. And then listen to these words. Your statutes are my heritage forever. They are the joy of my heart. My heart is set on keeping your decrees to the very end. There is no way that anyone could possibly overestimate the power of spending time in God's word. I have been inspired by those who have shared portions of God's word with us today, reminding us again of just how awesome our God is. In spite of all the things that we've been through individually, collectively as a nation, we are reminded that God has this, that God is still in control, that God is still our hope. He is still our future. He is steadfast. Scripture reminds us not only here and other places that his word is a light, so he recognizes that we live in a dark world. He acknowledges that it should be our heritage, it should be our legacy, it should be how we have patterned our lives, and it should be our joy. Other passages would remind us that God's word is living and active, sharper than any double-edged sword. We're reminded that it equips us for every good work, that God's word endures forever. And perhaps as important as anything when spending time in God's word is Paul's reminder to us in Romans chapter 10 that consequently faith comes by hearing and hearing by the word of God. And if we're not convinced that faith is that important, then the Hebrews writer would underscore it by saying without faith, it is impossible to please him. It is impossible to please him. 
So there's no shortcut to a faith that is deep, that is meaningful, that is refreshing, that renews, other than spending time in God's Word. I cannot tell you how often over the years that I have had people come and talk to me about going through maybe a crisis of faith, for whatever reason that might be, and we all have them. And inevitably, because I'm not really all that clever, my response to them is, well, how much time are you spending in God's Word? And, and I can't tell you how often people will say, well, I'm not talking about reading the Bible. I'm talking about my faith. And I'll say, that's exactly what I'm talking about as well. There is no shortcut to a deeper faith other through, than through God's Word. So we don't need to be just people of the Word. We need to be people in the Word. And we need to make sure that these are the words that are our guiding force. Again, as this year unfolds for us, and as we seek to give God the glory, today it has been because we've been spending time in the public reading of Scripture. Next Sunday, we're going to be giving God the glory in song. The following Sunday, we're going to be giving God the glory in prayer. And the last Sunday this month, we're going to be talking about giving God the glory through our communion, through the Lord's Supper, through our time of remembrance for Him. So again, I appreciate all of you being here today. You have participated in giving glory to God just as much as anyone who's been standing up here has been reading or praying or leading singing. Together we have collectively given glory to God. I want to thank those who are upstairs for going through all the different slides. I see Daphne and Charles and is that Randy up there as well? Maybe I can't see. That. Appreciate all of you being here today. My encouragement to you in this upcoming week is to spend more time reading. And you know what? As odd as it may sound, maybe you should read it out loud sometimes. Just spend some time reading God's word out loud and pondering those thoughts. May our resolve be to immerse ourselves in his wisdom, in his majesty, in his promises as we allow him to speak to us. So we conclude with these words that Paul again shared with Timothy, the one to whom he said, devote yourself to the public reading of scripture. Listen to these words too that Paul says and shares with Timothy, encouraging words for us as we bring our thoughts to a close today. But you, man of God, pursue righteousness, godliness, faith, love, endurance, and gentleness. Fight the good fight of faith. Take hold of the eternal life to which you were called when you made your good confession in the presence of many witnesses. And so we, as we bring this service to a close today, reflecting on how awesome our God is and how he desires to have a personal relationship with each of us, and he affirmed that as... I think it was Steve who read the scripture that God demonstrates his own love for us and that while we were yet sinners, Christ died for the ungodly. That was God's way of saying that I want to have a meaningful relationship with you. I want you to fight that good fight of faith. And I'm going to give you my word to be able to assure you that you can be reminded of my promises. You can be reminded of the hope that I give to you. So if you've never made that good confession, maybe today is that day for you to confess you believe that Jesus is the Son of God, surrender your life in the waters of baptism, allowing the, the blood of Jesus to wash away your sins. Or if you want to be identified with a church family that has a heart for serving people, that has a heart for loving people, that has a heart for spending time in God's Word to make a difference, then we would certainly encourage you to think about that as well. God has a place for you in this church family. Together, as we look forward to this upcoming year, let's be entering this new year with renewed hope with renewed assurance that God is with us, that we can make a difference for him. If you're subject to this invitation anyway, whatever we might be able to do for you, we invite you to come now while we stand and sing. Romans 11, 33 through 36. Oh, the depth of the riches of the wisdom and knowledge of God. How unsearchable his judgments and his paths beyond tracing out. Who has known the mind of the Lord? Or who has been his counselor? Who has given to God that God should repay them? For from him and through him and for him are all things. To him be the glory forever. Amen.